California, right? You've got the sunshine, the tech innovation, but then you've also got this massive problem with homelessness. Yeah, it's a real challenge. It really is. So today we're diving into how San Jose is tackling this um, with a different approach, tiny homes. Yeah. We're focusing on this place in San Jose, okay. Rue Ferrari. It's a tiny home site, and we're going to be looking at their plan to expand it, all based on a recent article from the San Jose Spotlight. So if you're ready to explore this unique solution, let's get into it. You know what's interesting about this article is it doesn't just stay on that surface level of like tiny homes. Right. It digs deeper into this specific San Jose project, the Rue Ferrari site. And what makes it so different? Yeah, when I saw that title, Rue Ferrari, more than just tiny homes, yeah. it definitely made me wonder, what are they doing that's so special? Well, I think it starts with understanding that having a home, it's not just about having a roof over your head, especially for someone who's been living on the streets. Definitely. And Rue Ferrari gets that. They provide private bathrooms. You've got a shared kitchen area, even garden beds for residents. They even have a dog park. Can you believe that? A dog park. Wow. That really stood out to me in the article. I mean, it shows they're really thinking about the well-being of these residents, you know, on an emotional level. Exactly. Recognizing that for many people, their pets are family. It's all about creating that sense of community, a sense of normalcy, which is so important for someone trying to rebuild their life. It's more than a temporary fix. It feels like they're trying to build a supportive environment. And they're definitely expanding on that idea. The article mentioned adding 107 new units. So that's housing for 146 more people. Wow. That's huge. Yeah. And with this expansion, Rue Ferrari is going to become the city's largest tiny home site. Wow. With a capacity to house 270 people. Yeah. It's a big commitment to tackling this issue of homelessness. It is, and it's part of an even bigger city plan, right? Yeah. I mean, they're aiming to add 784 beds for people experiencing homelessness over the next year and a half. That is incredibly ambitious. Ambitious for sure, but also really expensive. Yeah. The article is pretty upfront about the costs involved in this. Yeah. So for the Rue Ferrari expansion, you're looking at over $30 million just to build it. Wow. And then about $5.4 million annually to keep it running. See, those numbers, they really make you stop and think. Yeah. $30 million for construction, $5.4 million every year to operate. It really makes you consider the economic side of things. For sure. It's a huge investment. No question. Yeah. But the article makes a good point. What's the cost of doing nothing? That's true. Think about the pressure on emergency services, on health care for people living on the streets. The social costs, those have a price tag too, even if it's harder to measure. Right, you can't really put a dollar amount on that. Exactly. And even though the city council approved this expansion, the article also mentions some worries about those rising operating costs. It's tough trying to balance it all. Totally. Finding that balance between tackling this urgent need, mm. you know, getting people off the streets and managing like taxpayer money. Right. It's one of the toughest things to do. For sure. Really makes you think, what's a price worth paying to solve this? What do you think? It's a question we all need to consider. It's easy to get caught up in the dollars and cents, but then you read about someone like Tosi, a resident at Rue Ferrari, and it really brings it home. It's those personal stories. Yeah. That remind us behind every statistic, there's a real person with a real life and real struggles. It's so easy to forget that sometimes. It's easy to just see numbers. Yeah, and Toe's experience, that's what brings that human element to all of this. His story is really powerful to think he was homeless for seven years. Wow. He had spinal surgery, then lost his job and ended up on the streets. That's tough. He talked about how harsh it was, the cold, the rain, you know, just constantly facing hardship. And now he's got a place at Rue Ferrari. He's even reapplied for his green card. He's getting the support to get back on his feet. It's amazing how a place like Rue Ferrari can give someone that opportunity. Mm. You know, it's not just about putting a roof over their heads. Right. It's about giving them a chance to rebuild, to feel stable again, to have hope for the future. It really shows how life-changing something like this can be. Absolutely. But the article also points out that it's not always easy, these projects. They come with their own set of challenges. Yeah, it's not as simple as just building a few homes. Right, like the article talked about how the Rue Ferrari expansion, it was supposed to be done this year. Right. But there have been delays. Yeah, those construction delays, that's something we see a lot, unfortunately, especially with bigger projects like this. It makes you wonder what causes those kinds of delays. It's complicated, but rising costs are a big factor. Even with the best planning, things happen. And then you start to think, well, what about those other spots San Jose wants to build on? Yeah. 
Will they run into the same problems? Makes you realize you got to be realistic about these things, you know? It's true. And that's why transparency is so important. Yeah. Speaking of which, it was really good that the article included those reader comments, you know, to see what people are saying. Yeah, the comments, they showed how differently people feel about this whole thing. Definitely. Some people, like, there was this one comment from Joe Smith. Right. He wanted to know, like, how full are the units they already have at Rue Ferrari? He was concerned about making sure those 82 beds were being used. And that's a fair question. Got to make sure things are being used effectively if you're putting resources toward them. Absolutely. And then there were comments like CLs who were frustrated. They were like, this is a clown show. Talking about how slow everything's moving. You can really sense that feeling of like, we need to do something now. And it's understandable, right? This is a crisis. People want to see solutions, and they want to see them fast. Exactly. And it also makes you think about those different approaches people are suggesting. Like one reader, SJCA, they questioned if tiny homes are really the best way to go. Yeah. They thought maybe those big, high-density shelters might be more cost-effective. That's a good point. It's not enough to just do something. You have to make sure it's the best use of resources. Mm. What do you think about that? High density versus tiny homes. Well, they both have their advantages and disadvantages, don't they? Yeah. Tiny homes, they give people more privacy, their own space, which I think is really important when you're trying to get back on your feet. It's about dignity, too, you know? Yeah. Having your own space can make a big difference. Absolutely. And they can help build a stronger sense of community sometimes. Yeah. But those high density shelters, they're definitely cheaper to build and run, and you can fit way more people in them, which is something to think about, especially in a place like San Jose where space is limited. Right, you got to weigh it all out. The individual's well-being versus how many people you can help overall, and of course the cost. It's not simple. Not at all, and it probably changes depending on the city and what their needs are. Exactly. The important thing is to keep an open mind, look at different solutions, and consider both the numbers and, most importantly, the people involved. It all comes back to that balance, doesn't it? You've got the costs, the logistics, the public's opinion. And then you've got these individual stories like Toes that remind us why we're even having this conversation. It's like this tiny home, it's just one small piece of a much larger solution, you know? It really makes you think about all the different angles to this issue. Yeah, and that's what I really took away from this whole deep dive. Yeah. The Rue Ferrari project, you know, the, with the expansion and those reader comments, it really shows you how complex this whole thing is, trying to find real solutions for homelessness. It really does. And it makes you wonder, are there other ways to tackle this? Right. Besides tiny homes and these high density shelters, what else is out there? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? It is. Maybe it's not just about the immediate solutions, you know, maybe it's about looking at the bigger picture. Right. Like what leads to someone becoming homeless in the first place? Exactly. Things like, is there enough affordable housing? What about mental health services? Support for addiction. It feels like there's so many factors involved. There are. It's not a simple problem, so it's not going to be a simple solution either. <laughs> it's going to take a lot of different approaches, for sure. It makes you wonder if those solutions, are they already being thought up by someone, somewhere? Maybe. Who knows? Maybe even someone like Tawei, who's been through all of this and now has a chance to get back on track, he might have some really valuable insights. It's true. Sometimes the best solutions come from people who've lived through the problem. Exactly. And that's what I'd love for people to take away from this, you know? That's what can we learn from the Rue Ferrari project, from Toe, from what those readers are saying? How can we all be part of creating a future where everyone has a safe and stable place to live? Those are the questions we should be asking ourselves. Those are important questions for all of us to consider. Absolutely. Well, thanks for joining us for this deep dive. It's clear that tackling homelessness is going to take empathy, innovation, and these tough conversations. We'll see you next time.